So today we're going to recap some of the skills that we looked at again quite a long time ago around subtraction and re remembering that again, so that'll be really, really good. Um, and then we're going to look at, at graphs and how we can take information from graphs. Now, not just answer some questions around graphs, but think, well, why were they created? And what is the bigger picture about what this tells us? It will even end up testing your acting skills, possibly later on. Um, so that's going to be a real challenge. Let's get started with that recap. So we're going to start off today going back a few weeks and looking at some of the different strategies for subtraction that we've been developing. So we looked at subtraction and this idea of same difference. The difference between 12 and 8, 12 subtract 8 is 4. So if I change that by adding the same amount to both numbers, um, so 15 and 11, you notice 12 and 8, if we add 3 to both numbers, 15 and 11, the difference between 15 and 11 is also 4. And then if we subtract the same amount from both numbers, so to 9 subtract 5, so from 15 and 11 subtract 6 from both numbers, 9 and 5, the difference stays the same. If we add or subtract the same amount to both numbers, the difference stays the same. So, we looked at how we could use that for 61 subtract 46, the difference between 61 and 46. Well, that's the same as the difference between 59 and 44. And I think that's slightly easier to calculate then. Um, because if we're doing a subtraction, I can just think 9 subtract 4 is 5, 5 subtract 4 is 1, it's going to be 15. The answer to both questions, 15. Now, if we understand that, we could come to a question like this and actually just think, right, I can make an easier calculation with the same answer. If I add 12 to both numbers, I have 515 subtract 400. So the answer to both questions is 115. Okay, so adjusting to subtract. Have a look at these two calculations here. Have a think. Is there anything you can do to change those calculations to make them easier to calculate with? Questions that will have the same answer. Or well, how could you play around with those numbers? Uh, pause the video. Have a think. What could you do there? So let's have a look what could be done. Now, you might have done this differently, which of course is great. I'm going to show you how these numbers can be manipulated. So I thought I would change um, this question to 3,394. So that's 20 more. Subtract 2,000, which is 20 more. So this calculation will have the same answer. But this time, all I've got to do is take off the 2,000s. And that gives me 1,394. So I thought that's a nice way to play with those numbers to make the calculation easier. For 681, subtract 238. One of the little challenges I'll have here is I'll go 1, subtract 8. Well, I can't do that, so I have to think, well, so um, I'm going to have to regroup there. Actually, if I just do instead 679, subtract 236, then I can just do uh, 9, subtract 6, 7, subtract 3 in the tens, and 6, subtract 2 in the hundreds. And what will that give me? 443. I, I find that, and then I know, of course, the answer to both questions is 443. This principle of always looking at calculations and think, how can I just play with these numbers beforehand? I think is an enormously, enormously powerful one. To start off with, when you're taking information from graphs, you have to learn just what the bars mean or what the lines mean and how you can read across and how to do the readings. But what we eventually want you to be able to do is understand what's the purpose of this graph? What's it communicating? And to be able to take readings, but also to be able to develop an understanding, a wider understanding from looking at graphs. So we're going to try and live and breathe and eventually act some different graphs in, uh, in this video. So let's have a look at this one as an example. So there are 56 children in the school in Key Stage 1 and 119 children in Key Stage 2. So here we've got a graph that shows how many children go to each of the after-school sports clubs. Now, there could be questions asked about this graph, like a one-step question is just a question where you only need to take one piece of information to be able to answer it. So let's say, for example, how many girls go to Key Stage 1 dance club? Then I would just need to look at this bar, read across, hopefully accurately read from the, from the graph, and I've got a one-step question. For a two-step question, I might need to take two pieces of information to be able to answer the question. Say, for example, how many more boys than girls go to Key Stage 2 football club? I would need to look at both and then work out, well, what's this difference? Or if I was saying, well, let's say it was um, how many more children in Key Stage go to Key Stage 2 clubs than Key Stage 1 clubs? Then I need to take lots of readings from this graph. 
um, and there'd be different numbers of steps. Um, but there are some questions you could ask, because I think this graph might be put together where there's a school who are thinking, well, let's have a look at which children go to our clubs. And if we're designing some new clubs, which clubs should we do? Should we have more for Key Stage 1, more for Key Stage 2? Um, how about the balance of boys and girls? And that might be the purpose of this graph, is actually thinking, well, what, what are we going to learn from it? What does this information show us and tell us? Um, so it might be something like... Um, should we have more clubs that are indoors or outdoors? Or, or should we have more clubs for Key Stage 2 or Key Stage 1, if we're putting any more clubs on? So your first task is this one. What I want you to do is pause the video. Which different types of questions can you ask based on this graph? Can you think of a one-step question, a two-step or a multi-step question? Or can you think of any more wider inference type questions based on this, on this graph? OK, now, again, I'll not be able to find out what those questions were, but I'd love it if you did message through with the questions that you wrote based on this graph. We could come and actually try and answer them on, uh, on Friday's video. Now, let's see if we can really understand deeply what, what graphs are showing as well here and look at the scales and, and see why they're important. So here, which answer? So this graph shows the speed of a 400 metre runner. What is happening at the point showed by the arrow? OK, so at first the the runner is going at no speed and then very quickly this runner has to increase in their speed. Um, and then we get to like this level here. But what about when we get here? So is it A, is that the runner's fastest speed? Is it B that the runner finishes there? This is where the race for he or she ends. Or C, is the runner just slowing down? Uh, pause the video. What do you think there? Here, let's have a look. Well, actually, what we can see is this is a graph that shows the speed of the runner in miles an hour. And so here, I'd say that's probably the fastest speed about there. So I'd say here, the runner, well, is still going at almost 20 miles an hour, but it's slightly slowing down here. So C, in this case, the runner is slowing down. It's definitely not stopped because the runner is still going at, as I say, all, almost 20 miles an hour. OK, let's have a look at this one. Which answer? So this graph shows the distance travelled by a cyclist. So um, the distance keeps increasing as the cyclist keeps going on. Um, and this is the length of the ride. So it looks like about three hours that's being measured here. Um, so here, at this point here, has the cyclist stopped? Or is the cyclist riding slower? Or is the cyclist riding at the same speed? Uh, pause the video. Which one this time? OK, let's have a look. There's a key difference here in that on this scale, this scale isn't showing speed, that the speed is going up and down. It's showing the distance covered. So let's go. The distance keeps going up and up and up. And then this line flattens out. So now here, the distance that the cyclist has travelled hasn't changed. So if the distance hasn't changed, actually, the cyclist must have stopped. Because if the cyclist is moving, the graph will go up slightly, slightly. So the cyclist isn't riding at the same speed. If this was a graph showing speed, that would be the case. But it's not. It's showing distance travelled. So here, in this case, the cyclist actually must have stopped to not be travelling any further. Now, we're going to come to the star of the show here. Act the graph. I'm going to have a go at this one. And I'm going to try and bring this graph to life. Now, have a look. Start off with. We've got surprise shown by facial expression. It's quite low and it gets lower. And how long is it? I would say that's about seven seconds. And then we show a slight more bit of surprise and then the surprise increases. Now, I'm going to try and bring this graph to life. I wonder how well I do it, how accurately it's done. Let's have a look. Well, now it's your turn. Can you act this graph? Excitement shown by facial expression from zero to 20 seconds. Of course, I'll not be able to see it, but pause the video, have a go. How can you act this graph? Oh, okay, I hope you've had a go. I would have loved to have seen what you did. 
Okay, so for today's task, we've got a bit of a mix of different of different things here. And um, the first question is an act the graph one. So here we go. Speed of running on the spot uh, is over 30 seconds. See if you can act this as accurately as you can from running on the spot very slowly to very fast, just like the line graph shows. The next question is which graph? So here Jen describes her performance in a bike race. Now, which graph represents this performance? Is it the blue one or is it the red one? How do you know? Um, the last question says, create the graph. Um, so we've got Jamie and his story of his race. Um, so can you approximately draw the line graph that shows, that represents this description? How, you have to think about how you adjust that graph. Um, now, there are some answers un underneath there, which I'll show you only really, really quickly. Now, I've only given you a few questions because we've got this open invite. Can you think of your own act the graph question? Now, if anyone comes up with a good act the graph question, I'd love to use it on Friday. And even if anyone has permission to share a, um, a video of themselves acting their own graph, well, it would be amazing to share one or two of them on Friday. Um, so again, that's an open invite. I would love to see any of those. I hope you enjoy it. And again, I am going to be back tomorrow and I hope you'll join me. Well, I thought I'd have to come back and have a look at how these guys are getting on. Um, I hope you've really enjoyed today. Um, if you've managed to do any um, acts of those graphs and you wanted to share them, that would be absolutely amazing. Uh, and I'm going to see you again tomorrow.